the next video was uh, particularly concerning to me. Um, he discusses how um, God, um, you know, removed Israel and the Jews from, uh, they're no longer his chosen people and gave it to the church. And now he is, he has taken, um, taken this authority away from the church as well. And the church is no longer his, his people either. <laughs> This is very important to understand because it shows us how the times of this church is drawing to an end. The church became so different from the form on which she should be as described in the New Testament. And now the church is in a state similar to how the old Israel were. So what would God do? Could he now take away the vineyard from the church? And if he does so, who would he give it to? Can you discuss this? Let us see what the scripture says. Uh, the scripture spoke about uh, the salvation of uh, the remnant of the Jews, like in uh, in uh, in Romans chapter eleven. Uh, so we we know that uh, the, there is remnant from the Jews will be uh, will be saved, but how they will be saved when they join the church. When they join the body of Christ, when they, they believe in Jesus Christ, when they become uh, a Christian, uh, you know, uh, St. Paul in Roman uh, chapter 11, uh, he said in, in verse 25, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own opinion. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. So Israel, you know, became blind to the mystery of Christ until the Gentiles, the fullness of Gentiles come in. And so all Israel will be saved. Be saved how? When they believe in Christ, when they become Christian. Okay. Uh, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Concerning the gospel, they, Israel, are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So St. Paul is saying, Israel now blind because you don't believe in Christ. Until the Gentiles, fullness of Gentiles came in, into faith. Then at the end, Israel will be saved. How they will be saved? Not by continuing in their Jewish beliefs, but by believing in Christ. Not by continue to be enemies of Christ. But when they believe in Christ, when they become part of the body of Christ, the church of God, when they become Christian and believe in Christ as the true Messiah and the true Savior, you know. And thus, as St. Paul said in Ephesus in chapter 2, the one nation and all nations are united in Christ, the Jews and the Gentiles become one, reconciled together in the body of Christ. But to say that God will reject the church and go back to Israel, that's not the teaching of the scripture. This is not the teaching of, uh, of uh, uh, the Bible. In, in, uh, in Galatians, actually, St. Paul spoke about Jerusalem now, refers to Israel, and Jerusalem above refers to uh, the Christian church. And he said 
in, in Galatians chapter 4, starting from verse 21. And this is very important ch chapter to understand what the Bible teaches about Israel and about Christianity. He said, tell me you who desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons. The one by a bondwoman, Hagar, and the other by free woman, Sarah. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh. Meaning what? Hagar was young, so she was able to bear children. So according to the flesh means according to the law of nature. Mm. And he of the free woman, Isaac, through the promise. Because Sarah was old, mm -hmm. and according to the law of nature, she cannot have children. So Isaac was born according to the promise. But Ishmael was born according to the law, according to the flesh. And th then he said, which things are symbolic? Meaning what? Israel, in order to be from the chosen people of God, I have to be born from Jewish parents. So if I am born according to the flesh from Jewish parent, I am, th that's the Old Testament, I am from the chosen people of God. But in the New Testament, not born according to the flesh, not according to the blood, not according to the will of man, but born from God, according to the promise. You know, I, I don't have to be from Christian parents, but if I believe in Christ, then I'm baptized. I will be son of God from the family of God according to the promise. So he's saying Ishmael is a symbol of Israel. And Isaac is a symbol of the Christian. Ishmael is a symbol of the Judaism. Isaac is a symbol of Christianity. Because Christians are born according to the promise. Jews born according to being the chosen people of God according to the flesh. That's why he said, which things are symbolic? For these are the two covenants. The old covenant, Israel, new covenant, Christian. The one from Mount Sinai, that's the Old Covenant, which gives the birth to bondage. Because Hagar was Egyptian from, from the same area, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and correspond to Jerusalem, which now is to Israel. So he is saying Hagar symbolizes uh, Israel and her birth to Ishmael symbolizes the, the Jews who did not believe in Christ uh, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem above, Christian, is free like Sarah, which is the mother of us all, the Christian who are born according to the promise, not of flesh, not of full man, not of blood. For it is written in Isaiah, Rejoice, O barren one, that is the Gentiles, the, the, the Christian church, Gentiles in the Old Testament, they were barren. Nobody was from the family of God. But only Israel was not barren in the Old Covenant. But in the New Covenant, rejoice, O barren, who, you who do not bear, break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate in the Old Testament has many more children than she has a husband. How many Jews became Christian and how many Gentiles became Christian? This desolate in the Old Testament now have many, many children, more than Israel who became Christian. Now we, St. Paul is saying, brethren, as Isaac was, the children of the promise. So Christian are the children of the promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, Ishmael was persecuting uh, Isaac. Ishmael persecuted Isaac. So he's saying that's why the Jews are persecuting Christian. As Ishmael persecuted Isaac, so the Jews are persecuting Christian. 
Even so, it is now. That was St. Paul is saying. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman, Hagar, and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So, as God said to Abraham, cast out the bondwoman and her son, so he is saying, Israel and their children who do not believe in Christ will be cast out. Unless they believe in Christ, then they will be the children of the free womb. That's why he concluded, so then brethren, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. That's what the Bible teaches. Then how can I, I say God will leave the new covenant church and go back to the old covenant church? How? how? The, the, the teaching is very, very clear. Yes, Israel will be saved when they join the new covenant. Not God will leave the new covenant church and go back to, to Israel. As if God is destroying what he established. What Jesus Christ established on earth, then he will destroy it. Let's turn to uh, a book that Atif wrote, uh, Prayers and Prophesying. Um, in, in it, he uh, has a daily prayer that he mandates must be prayed every day, the blood of Jesus over every physical, the blood of Jesus over every physical member of the human body. Uh, what are the origins of this prayer? Is there any biblical basis or, or references to the early church when it comes uh, to this prayer? Again, I, I don't know. Uh, when I read this uh, book and I read this prayer, I was surprised. Uh, Atif was a physician, a medical doctor. So I think he used his knowledge of anatomy uh, to ask the blood of Jesus Christ to uh, anoint and bless every single uh, uh, organ in, 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 in the physical body. But... Uh, when we are baptized and we are anointed by the holy oil, Mayroon, and we receive the Holy Spirit, then the Bible says clearly, don't you know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit abide in you? When he spoke about a sin of sexual immorality, he, he said, should I take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? No. So now my members, my organs are the members of Christ. I am united with Christ in communion and abide in Christ and Christ abide in me. I and Christ become one, you know. So, uh, yes, the Holy Spirit is sanctifying in, in the end of the... Um, in the end of the fraction, the conclusion of the fraction, we say purify our eyes, our understanding, our hearts, our souls, our consciences, our spirits, you know. But we don't go to a certain organ. He mentioned the kidney, he mentioned the spleen, he mentioned the lungs, he mentioned the pancreas, you know, every single organ, you know. And, and he said the blood of, of Jesus, you know, sanctify this. Just again, something you need to impress the people. You know, when I introduce a new prayer, uh, nobody you know, used it before. And I feel that, you know, uh, the, the blood of Jesus will uh, purify my lung, my kidney, my liver, my gallbladder, my uh, larynx, my, you know. Uh, yeah, it's impressive, mm. you know. Something, something new, just to impress the people. Thank you, Sayyidina, for kind of going through um, all of the heresies that he's, that he's preaching. When you go through it, it seems very, it sounds very clear and obvious, you know, that, that these are false teachings. Um, but unfortunately, he does have followers and people are following him. So. What advice can you give us in terms of how to protect ourselves and how can we uh, discern false teachings from, from the truth? I am sure any Orthodox Church, whether Eastern or Oriental, Chalcedonian or non-Chalcedonian, 
uh, disagree with all these heresies that we discussed. How to protect ourselves? The Lord told us, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is in the light. God is light. And that he said, I am the light of the world. Anyone tell me, uh, turn me against my parents, turn me against uh, my clergy, turn me against uh, the community of the believers in the body of Christ, you know, this a, a big, big alarm. This a big alarm. So. Thank you so, again, uh, so much for being with us today and uh, uh, broadening our, our uh, knowledge on this topic. Thank you, Mary.